Welcome to Power Pivot video number four. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Power Pivot for array formulas or Power Pivot, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we want to look at an array formula. We're going to see two different array, three different array formulas, and then see that probably it's a lot easier and faster calculating when we use DAX formulas instead of array formulas. Now, here's our data set here. It's a bunch of names, control down arrow. So it looks like we have almost 20,000 names, control home. And our goal is to count unique items in this list. We just want to count how many unique names there are in this list. Now, there's a few array formulas we could do. And I've done lots of videos on this, and my Control Shift Enter book covers these. Uh, formulas in great detail. That's a great formula. And actually, watch when I hit Enter, it doesn't take very long to calculate. I better turn this off. But that's pretty complicated. We'll see that the comparable function in DAXED, distinct count, is much easier than knowing how to do that. Now, let me show you another formula. This one's pretty easy, and it's pretty well known. Some product, and you simply do count if. And you highlight the range. So you do range, Control Shift, Down Arrow, Control Backspace, Comma. And we'll do the same range for criteria. This is a function argument array operation. That argument is expecting a single value. We're going to give it almost 20,000. Control Backspace, close parentheses, close parentheses. And I'm actually going to come to the beginning and do 1 divided by. Now, that formula is not too hard to create. And the problem is, when I hit Enter, watch this. It is just going to take forever to calculate. This formula is great on small data sets, and that's basically what I point out in the book. Otherwise, you're going to have to go to something uh, much more complicated that is faster calculating. But check this out. We can use the DAX function distinct count. Now, for this DAX function, we don't even have to invoke power pivot. So in our last video, we saw how to add data sets like this to the data model using Power Pivot and not using Power Pivot. As long as you have Excel 2013, you can do this. Ready? You have to convert it to a table. Control T, Enter, Alt J, T, A to name it. We can see up here, list of names, Enter. All right, so now we can add this to our data model. And how do we do that? Just as we saw in last video, pivot table. Insert Pivot Table or Alt N V. This opens up our Create Pivot Table dialog box. And just as in last video, we're going to use Add This to Data Model. Now, in last video, we used this feature right here to add to Data Model to add two tables. We only have one table here. And all we're going to do is, if you check this in 2013, the product function in a regular pivot table gets replaced with distinct count. All right, click OK. And watch this. Whoops, I didn't want to click OK. I'm going to move this. Move pivot table, existing sheet. I'm going to click back over here. I should have done this in the first place. This is a cool trick in itself. You can change it. Click OK. Now I'm going to click and drag it to the values. And instantly, it will count it. But I can right click in the values area. Right click, come down to Summarize Value by More Options, Value Field Settings. We drag it down, and no more product. It's Distinct Count. Click OK. Now, this is kind of cheating, and I'm not really going over and using Power Pivot, but that is fast. If we did go over to Power Pivot, check this out. We could go to Manage and look. Alt B M. This opens the Manage Data Model window. And check that out. There is our table. And it took the name that we gave to the table, list of names. Now, this is the table. Down here is the measure grid. This is where we can create our calculated fields. I'm going to point to the gray bar and click and drag up. Point to the column and click and drag, just to give us a little breathing room there. Now, just as in video number one, we're going to use the measure grid. When I click in a cell down here, as soon as I start typing the calculated field name and then the assignment operator and the formula, it'll appear up here in the formula bar. So you ready? We're going to call this unique 
list. And you can see up in the formula bar, there it is. Now, the assignment operator is going to be colon and an equal sign. Now, assignment operator is just fancy. Over in Excel, we never use that term. We use the equal sign in a cell over in Excel to tell Excel that it's a formula. Here, in order to say that this is a calculated field or measured, colon and then equal sign. As we mentioned in the first video, the colon, you might have seen that in Access, where we have the actual calculated field name and then everything following the colon is our formula. So now we're just going to use distinct count, down arrow tab. And we're going to use our convention of typing out our name of our table and the field name. Now I'm actually going to arrow down. There's the table name and field names in square brackets, tab, close parentheses, and enter. Now we can see the 72 there. Now we can use this calculated field in a pivot table. Now you might be saying, well, wait a second. This is a lot more work here than just creating it with our pivot table. Yes, absolutely. If you're just after distinct count, that pivot table is awesome. However, later in this video series, we'll see that creating explicit calculated fields rather than relying on the internal functions inside of a pivot table are awesome because we can format it and we can use this in other formulas. Later in the series, we'll see how to use unique count matched with total revenue to get things like average sales per day. All right, now let's go create a pivot table just to finish this section out. I'm going to say Existing Sheet, click the Collapse button. And I'm going to be really risky here. I'm going to put it right below, click OK, click OK. And now, notice I have these um, other tables here. These are actually coming from this sheet. As we said a couple videos ago, whatever number of tables you have in your workbook will show up in your field list. These ones are not added to the data model yet. This one is. We can see that black line there. I'm simply going to open up and drag the not the names field, but this is an actual calculated field, a formula that shows up in our field list. Drag it down to values. All right, so we can clearly see that distinct count is a great new feature in DAX. We can get it with a pivot table or build it over in as a calculated field. We saw that uh, you know some of these other array formulas are too slow calculating and too complicated. Now I want to show you one last example in this video of an array formula. Now here is similar data to the, the data I'm going to be using all the way through. We have three tables. Now if we weren't allowed to create helper columns. Over in video number one, we saw how uh, VLOOKUP with a helper column is sometimes exactly what you want. But check this out. What if we weren't allowed to add that extra helper column? We absolutely could create a very complicated array formula to total up the east. And actually, I have a video that shows you how to do this. This formula with all these wild array calculations is doing relational databasing without VLOOKUP helper columns and without relationships between the tables like we would do in Power Pivot, we were able to summarize by region. Get, get this, to summarize revenue, we had to be able to, from somehow in this table, look up over to this table, get the price, and then multiply discount times units, and then also have a relationship or a VLOOKUP or an array formula to simulate that with uh, region. The point here is that that is unbelievably complicated. That is not easy to do. That is super advanced Excel. Totally easier if you're not allowed to have helper columns, right? To just go ahead and import these into Power Pivot and build relationships. All right, now in our next video, we will start a bigger comprehensive example. Next video, we'll see how to import from multiple sources and filter as we're importing the data into Power Pivot. All right, see you next video.